calling in from New York City, Christian Leitner. How you been, Christian? I've been doing great. Thanks for having me. You bet. You bet. Uh, how much of these games you've been taking in, NCAA tournament? Uh, I think I've watched every game possible. Okay. Um, I. I only missed one or two Duke games all year, and then I started watching the tournament on, you know, Tuesday when they were doing the first four. Okay, very good. So you are locked all the way in, and my question for you then is, what happened to Duke in your estimation, Christian? Duke ran into a Michigan State team that does what Michigan State teams do, and that is they're physical, they have some upperclassmen leadership, they play great defense. They're well coached by Izzo, and they rebound real well. And that's what Michigan State teams have done, geez, for the last 20 years. So that's exactly what they did on Sunday afternoon, and that's why they beat Duke. What is Coach K thinking today? Have you spoken with him since the loss at all, Christian? No, I have not spoken to him at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so what do you think is going through his head today? I think he's thinking, man, I need to go have a little vacation. <laughs> um, you know, it's a long year. He puts a lot of effort in. I'm sure he's highly disappointed. And I hope he's in Las Vegas at the Wynn Resort, like I know he likes to do. And I hope he's, <laughs> I hope he's resting a little bit because... What that guy does is remarkable every year, and the effort and the passion and the intensity he puts into his team is it's beautiful to watch, and it's, I still love it, and that's something I fell in love with in 1986, and that's why I went and played for him, because I loved his passion. Two questions on this. Uh, one, what, what do you say then to those who say that the Duke season was a failure because they did not make a Final Four with such a talented group of freshmen? Man, I haven't been hearing that, but I don't get on social media very often, and okay. I don't listen to anything very much. But okay. I didn't know people were saying that. Um, it's disappointing that they don't make the Final Four, just because I want them to make the Final Four very, you know, so badly. But I don't think they had a disappointing season at all. So I disagree with people who are saying that. Okay, that, that's all I would say, and there's no other explanation needed. Okay, and what what is Coach K's game of chance? If you say you know he goes to win, does he is he a, is he a blackjack? Oh, I guy? don't know. I don't know if he gambles at all, but I know he rests there and gets rest and relaxation. Um, I've been out there working before, and he was there too. And I went over to his condo, and he was just sitting by the pool relaxing. Okay, all right. Coach K can just uh, let it all hang out there. Christian Leitner here. Uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Um, if you were a senior on a team and Zion walked in the, the door, uh, would how would you have uh, greeted him back in the day, Christian? Well, I'll tell you how I greeted Grant Hill. Okay. Will that work? That works. So with Grant, I immediately threw him the ball and, and said, come dunk on me. Let's see if you can dunk on me. And I, and I would stand under the hoop, and I'd let him get over to the three-point line, and he'd try to dribble in and dunk on me. Now, I don't think I'd do the same thing for Zion. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I mean, I was going to say that because some of my favorite moments during the tournament was talking about how whether somebody actually had their feet moving trying to take a charge on Zion and how it was a bad call, should have been a block, not a charge. And I thought, you got to get credit just for standing in there, right? Oh, my God. Did You saw how he knocked over that skinny kid from Syracuse, you know, a few months ago in Cameron. I mean, the kid almost broke his neck. I know. but he and get... He's just a physical specimen like no one has ever seen. So it's going to be fun watching him play at the next level. So did uh, Grant Hill ever dunk on you? Was he ever successful? Yes. Once at the end of his sophomore year, which would be the end of my senior year, we stopped playing that little game. <laughs> That sounds like you took a class in Darwinism as well at uh, at Duke. Yes, <laughs> things evolve and things change and things get passed down and handed over. And, you know, his first freshman year and half of his sophomore year, maybe he couldn't duck on me. But by the end of his sophomore year, 
the reins and the control started to be turned over for sure. <laughs> Christian Leitner here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, I've never asked you this, but uh, I will now. Um, how how were you chosen to go on the Dream Team? How did that happen for you? I think it happened because I um, was on a national team every year after my freshman year. So I think back then – the first year after the Olympics, it was the Goodwill Games, or no, the Pan Am Games, and then the Goodwill Games, and then the World Games. Do you remember that, Rich? Sure, of course. And then the Olympics. So every year I, I was on the national team, and one year we went to Mexico, the next year we went to Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, and and then some other year that I can't remember. But I think it happened because... Um, I was the player of the year. Mm -hmm. We won two national championships, and the USOC saw my commitment to, you know, their basketball program. So they rewarded me a little bit, a little bit for my commitment to them. Now, obviously, you were known for your uh, confidence, a swagger as well. Uh, did you have that walking into that locker room for the first time as well? Into the dream team? Yes, sir. No, not at all. I had the swagger of a rookie. Uh huh. Which which they loved. That's all. When you're a pro athlete, that's all you want to see. You want to see that the rookies behave the right way and act the right way. And I was very into acting like a rookie and respecting those guys and not stepping on anyone's toes. And that's another reason I think I was chosen for the team because if you have Shaq on that team, you know, he might be someone that you have to play a little more. And and they knew that I would sit quietly on the on the end of the bench and not complain too much. Huh. So you weren't requiring the minutes, is what you were saying. I was not requiring or demanding any minutes, <laughs> and I was along for the ride, and I was enjoying it, and it, it was still so much fun. Where is that gold medal right now? It's in my safe at home. How often do you take it out? Never. Come on. Never. Never. I don't. I. I don't even think I've showed my children it more than once, and it was, you know, not even me who did it. Someone else. Why? Uh, why not? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if it's I'd rather. I'd rather go up to the court, up to the, you know, the the park with the hoops at it, and play basketball with my son than show him old stuff. So. Okay. And then now, when you play hoops with your son. Uh... How how old is your son now? My son is 13, okay. and he just did something on the court the other day that made me so happy because... Um, What's that? You know, the game isn't all about dribbling and shooting and passing. Some of the game, part of the game of basketball is reading the defense and knowing where to go in terms of spacing on the court. And finally, I saw my 13-year-old boy do something on the court the other day that showed me that he's learning the game and learning about spacing and learning about, you know, where to go in, in relation of the defense. So that was a lot of fun for me. No to see. Kid, that's awesome. Did he slap the floor to play defense? Did he get, get stop that? He's not slapping the floor yet. You don't get to do that until you go to Duke. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any part of your game that he does have already? Yes, the one part of my game that he has already is something that I've been drilling into his head since he was six years old, mm -hmm. and that is when you catch the ball, son, do not dribble right away. Catch your catch the ball, face your hoop, and don't dribble. Uh -huh. Save your dribble. That is a great idea. And that's something that my father taught me, and that's something that Coach K used to yell at us every day of our lives at Duke. <laughs> Catch and face, catch and face. Don't dribble right away. Fantastic. How, and is he tall? I mean, how does he have your, your height as well? He's tall, but there are taller kids than him in his class, and I think he'll be somewhere between 6'4 and 6'7. Well, that's fantastic. Christian Leitner here uh, uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, and hopefully his GPA is, is Duke-worthy, Christian, right? He's smarter than me, that's for sure. Okay, there you have it. Fantastic. Uh, what are you doing with Land O Lakes? Uh, this bot shot. There's a competition um, involving robotics and basketball. What can you walk me through this here, Christian? Well, of course, I'll be in Minneapolis at the Final Four this weekend, and I'm doing stuff with Land O Lakes because Land O Lakes is trying to change the perception of mo modern agriculture and encourage students to pursue agriculture as a degree. 
So we're doing this neat little idea where they they sent a box of metal parts to seven schools and said, build us a robot that can take shots. So on Sunday, we're going to have a horse competition Fantastic. where there's robots trying to beat each other in horse. And do you think you can beat the robot? I do not think I can beat the ro- <laughs> robot. I've already seen one of the robots, and it's just incredible. Yeah, but I mean, let's see. Let's see the robot go ten for ten against Kentucky and hit the game-winning shot that lives for decades, Christian. Let's see that happen, right? Well, that would be neat, but we don't really want that to happen, Rich. Jeez. Well, I mean, that's a very dystopian view of the future. I agree with you, Christian. <laughs> um, but you, I'm just trying. I'm trying to back your play here. You know what I'm saying? Which is, I'll be honest, uh, very troubling for me and i i'm 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 honest with you here you know i'm a michigan man and uh the fab five going down to you is something that still stings it still stings to this day to the point where my children watched me root for michigan state this weekend and wondered what was going on and i didn't have an answer for them to be very honest with you i know isn't it hard when you have to explain things like that to your kids yeah they don't understand they said to me why do you hate duke so much and I would, couldn't say, well, it's the coach. Can't say it's the coach. <laughs> Can't say it's the player because I love the play, you know, Zion, I, uh, the one on the court. Uh, you know, I and I, I, I try to explain to them just the anger I still feel because of you, Christian. I think that's basically it. Well, that's why the computer is awesome. Sit them down at the computer and say, you see this kid from 30 years ago? Mm-hmm. He beat our team a few times, and that's why I don't like him. So just YouTube it is basically what you're saying. Yes. To show <laughs> the YouTube therapy from Christian Leitner. I love it. Hey, Christian, I don't know if you're ever in Los Angeles, but I'd love to have you in studio one time as opposed to over the phone. Well, I'm not, and I never will be. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have against Los Angeles? I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Okay. I'm out there once a year. I was out there in San Francisco maybe two years ago doing a camp and I got okay. a buddy coach who's out in San Diego and he wants to have me over. So if I'm ever out there doing a basketball okay. camp, I'll stop by. I'd love that. I would, I would greatly appreciate it. Last one for you here. What, what advice do you give Zion before he heads to the NBA? What advice would you give him? Uh, hmm. Well, I've already said that he needs to be aware of the social media phenomenon and stay off that junk as much as he can and to get to hire a company to handle it for him because his his stuff is just going to blow up even bigger and bigger and bigger so he should hire someone to handle all that stuff um and then my other suggestion would be come back to duke as much as we can as much as you can so we can keep developing your game keep developing your jump shot and then i think he's unstoppable he is amazing. He does look amazing, and we'll see what he happens at the next level. Christian, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Rich. You got it. That's Christian Leitner, two-time NCAA champion. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.